So I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but I've noticed that there are times when the universe just seems to be pointing me through all different directions in a certain way or keeps bringing up the same idea, the same topic, even the same challenge again and again, even though it might show up in different ways. It's certainly been true for me around the topic that we're exploring today, bringing light into the body as we continue this series, Living in the Light by Deepak Chopra. As many of you are aware, I'm in the second semester of a year-long integral ministry program. And several weeks ago, we were given an assignment um, to intentionally focus. We had a whole process to be in sacred service to the evolutionary purpose statement that we're working with. I've shared this with you before, but it's transforming lives and making a positive difference in the world. It's both the inner work and the outer work. And so we were to pick an intention each day and then reflect and journal and, and share about our experience with it. And I was doing this while I was on my two week cruise. So I had a lot of opportunity to be really focused and not have a lot of external demands on me. And the second week, I set my intention to focus on the inner transformation part and specifically around maintaining balance in body, mind, and spirit, to be present in all of those aspects of my being. At this stage in our travels, there was a lot of doing. There was a, we were stopping um, almost every day at different um, ports of call. And I noticed in that time that I did pretty good at staying centering, staying present in my emotional and spiritual aspects. But my body was a whole different story. There was a lot I wanted to do and see. And I tended not to listen very well to what my body wanted or needed. I just pushed, this is what we do, you just push through. Oh no, I gotta climb. There was a lot of climbing, a lot of walking, and even though at the end of the first day I was tired, I was like, nope, we gotta go, until my body finally just um, got my attention with pain, because that's typically its last resort to say, hello, um, there's something going on here. And what I realized in all of that was this belief I had that the body was just this machine that was there to do my bidding. You know, it's kind of something that we've all had brought into our awareness as science arose over the last 100, 150 years and we understood the mechanics of the body that somehow that has translated to it's just this machine that's supposed to be there to do what we need it to do. This chapter in the book was a good reminder to me, it showed up again, that the body isn't a machine, even a miraculous one, which, one, which at times it seems so, but it is a storehouse of infinite knowledge. This is what the author says. He says there's innate knowledge, and we know this, there's an innate knowledge in our cells. They know exactly what to do and how to reproduce and how to form different aspects of our body in the immune system that protects us in all different parts when you look at it, but also in the holistic view of who we are in all of these realms, at least while we're on this human walk. And as I intentionally focus on it, it is a call for me to evolve from sort of my attitude of it takes a lickin' and keeps on ticking, which has kind of been, for those of you, yeah, I, I hear the chuckles for those of you who remember those old Timex commercials, to an attitude of valuing it as part of my wholeness. Bringing light into the body is about awakening to the body's wisdom. It is about nurturing a consciousness, having a conversation, being awake to this connection with our body. It's always there, this consciousness, but it often gets disguised. It gets blocked by stress and by bad diet and poor quality sleep and certainly our, our thoughts and our mood and our emotions affect our body. And when all those things are in place, it dulls 
our conscious awareness of this wisdom of the body. It blocks, as he states, the light from being more fully present within us. So a big part of our work, if we're working with this idea of bringing more light into the body, is to be present and to be attuned to what the body is saying to us. Rather, withdrawing our awareness from it whenever we feel a certain level of discomfort or stress or pain, we tend to go numb to what the body is saying to us because we don't want to hear it. We don't want to add to any more of what is causing us challenge. So another synchronicity happened this past week. As I know some of you are aware, I experienced a very intense, intermittent, intestinal pain, lower back pain, did, did not understand exactly what was causing it. Sometimes it was just on the dull and uncomfortable. Sometimes it was on the you will not ignore me level. And sort of being in this awareness of body and um, listening to the body, uh, I pulled out every healing, you know, I was asking, what do you need? Just tell me what you need. Every healing trick I had in my toolbox came out. Um, I did affirmations, I did self-reiki. I, I called in anybody I knew to call in, Jesus, Buddha, God of healing, the saints, the spirits. I mean, I was out there for whatever solutions that could show up because we had stuff to do. I had a, big, a busy week. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but when I'm in significant pain, even though we preach affirmative prayer, speaking positive words and, and being in that space of knowing the wholeness of who we are, in that pain, my praying turns to begging. I, you know, at that point, when you're in the middle of it, it, it is, I will take whatever help I can get. That may be those moments where the devil even, you know, it's like whatever, whatever it takes, I'm willing to do. So this chapter was another good reminder for me, and it's an invitation for you to also, some of you may already be quite in tune with it, but if you're not, to be present with what's going on in the body and allow its wisdom to guide how you navigate through whatever is happening, how you bring a greater sense of light into it. So the second half of this book um, is all about yoga poses that help open up the body in a very specific way to allow more light to come into the different aspects of our being. And we've been using one with each meditation. We're about to go and have a little meditation time to listen to see what our body wants to say to us this morning. And the yoga pose, I'm just inviting you right where you are, just on your lap. You want to be sitting up straight, and then in your lap, you can just have your hands, palms facing up. Just try and do a long spine. And as you sort of get into that position, you might want to close your eyes just so you can bring all of your attention inward. And just try and be as comfortable as you can where you're sitting. Take a deep breath in. and Let that breath go. And just let your attention go to wherever it wants to in the body. If you sense some discomfort or tightness or stiffness, stress. As your attention stays with it, just breathe in and then breathe into that space. Just letting your awareness rest there. And notice if the sensation begins to lessen as you're present with it. Feeling the body begin to heal itself with its innate knowledge. And once you can feel that beginning to release, then just let your attention wander again. See if there's anywhere else in this physical space that 
is calling for you to be present with it. And then just take a moment to ask inwardly of this body temple, what would you have me know in this moment? How can I bring greater balance into this whole part of my being? And then just simply listen as we spend just a few moments in the silence. Take another deep breath in, beginning to bring your attention back to this time and space, to the room and the chair supporting you. Might even want to wiggle your toes and your fingers just to feel that sense of groundedness in this time and in this space. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. So he talks about a number of different practices that you can incorporate to bring a greater sense of balance and wholeness. And the other one I want to focus on this morning, he calls resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from pain, from adversity, from difficult changes, from anything that happens, and it does happen to all of us at some point in time, in our lives, no matter how much we wish it wouldn't. Resilience and flexibility are just as important to the health of our body as they are in mind and in spirit. We have many studies that have shown that people who are flexible in their bodies tend to be more resilient in their lives, tend to be able to flow with the changes that often occur in our experience over time. Body flexibility and agility translate into our ability to bend and adapt to change. Think about that for a minute. How flexible we are in our physical being reflects back to how flexible we are in our ability to sort of go with the flow. That's another way of putting it. We know we're in this space when we can at least accept the possibility that we may not be right. We may not be seeing or understanding the complete picture. That we are open-minded to things and people that might be different than we are. That whatever shows up, we can maintain at least a base level of optimism. That's my optimism is always when something's going on, there's a sermon in there somewhere. That somehow when I get through it, there will be an opportunity to see the good in it. To be willing to sort of stretch ourselves and grow in new ways and embrace new aspects of life. You know, in the aging process, we have to embrace all of what comes with all of that. That agility to sort of move this way when the circumstances called. We had a lot of that Friday night. I mean, it was like, okay, judge isn't here yet? Well, we'll get a different judge. Thank you, Lori. Um, oh, MC hasn't arrived yet? Well, maybe we'll flip the order of the show. What? He showed up in the nick of time. So you never know what's going to unfold, and you just have to be willing to roll with it. Interestingly enough, when I say these things start happening to you, so then the other night I turn on, and there was a PBS program all about flexibility and its, and its importance in our body health, um, stretching and remaining agile. And I realized, you know, 
since, especially since COVID, my routine of stretching and flexibility has been probably pretty close to non-existence. I, I get on a roll every now and then, and then it doesn't seem to stick. So I know for me, that's one of the things that's needing to be added into my life, just so that in my whole being, I have that ability. So at this point, what I wanna do is, and we got enough at each table to have a good discussion. Um, we have a question that I'd like for you guys to talk amongst yourself. And the question is this, what's one way or one practice that you feel called to, either to add into your life or that taps into the wisdom of your body? And perhaps it's something that you're already doing and you feel like that that has served you in being more whole in all aspects of your life. So we're gonna keep that up there. We're gonna give you about three minutes and some of you with big tables, you might wanna just hop over to another. You can introduce yourself, especially if you don't know the other people sitting at your table. And then just one's, what's one practice, what's something that you feel called to do. And then when we are done with the discussion, we've got some runners and I would like one person to give us a very brief recap of what the input was or what was shared amongst the table. All right? We're gonna just start and if one person would just be willing to kind of just give us a quick recap so we can hear what, uh, what has uh, arisen for different people in the community, that would be great. Might foster some other ideas for other people. So uh, yeah, Susan, why don't you start there and then we're gonna go over to Sue. Okay, so um, Norma currently does yoga and Tai Chi and what she would like to begin would be tapping. And ironically, uh, this, this is an outcome of this. Oh, this is an outcome of this. Let me repeat that then. No, it's good. Keep this going. is an outcome of the spirit group that uh, Maddie was in, and Sue um, actually brought up in the spirit group that um, some tapping techniques and shared them with the group. So that was a uh, that was an outcome of having spirit groups. I just wanted to let you know. All right. And then Maddie is she's meaning to do yoga and then this is how our conversations became then norma suggested going to this to the senior center in in Eulis and do chair yoga all right she wants to do tapping and then for me it's it's i do currently yoga and balancing of chakras and i want to incorporate tapping okay all right and we'll walking 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 from this group lots of walking uh and uh flexibility is uh, wanting to be able to incorporate some of that flexibility and music uh music was also one that uh, someone brought up as far as being able to work with that all right thank you well we all three do something and um, we agreed that working on core and strength mm. there for um, balance and flexibility is very important, but each of us has something that we do, and we all committed to um, adding legs up the wall to our routines. Okay. At our table, it, is, it seems that a body in motion stays in motion. So we have yoga, we have walking, and walking. <laughs> so our table had, um, varied things and um, it was interesting because the ladies both uh, brought up a lot of exercise and Abida brought up dance and Sean and I both talked about things that were calming and and more focused so it's it's all about where we are individually to get to where we need to be gotcha thank you we too have a table that enjoys and values movement and meditation so we all participated in a little bit of all of that wonderful so we talked about the um, practice of Qigong, which is related to Tai Chi, um, sort of the fluid movements and getting your body moving and going, and the importance of setting a steady routine of doing that to just get yourself used to that and allow flexibility in your life. Okay, thank you. Similar reactions over here. So we had a dancing, a running, lots of exercise, but want to get back to chair yoga. 
um, maintaining core for balance. So we did talk some about balance. I think that's the only different thing that hasn't been talked about here. So as we age, how critical balance is and that stretching and just walking and all that are so great for balance. Anything I missed? <laughs> and we seem to have an agreement that sometimes our busy world keeps us detached from paying attention to the body and that uh, flexibility and stretching are very good benefits to uh, trying to hone things down a little bit. I personally had a broken ankle this year, so I've had a great experience with sitting still and relaxing and paying attention to healing at times when I'm typically not attuned to doing that sort of thing. So I think we all had an agreement about doing what we need to do to stay in touch and relax all sometimes. Right. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of movement. Movement was one of the keys. Um, and I think movement is great just from, um, let's see, I got, uh, I'm looking at our online folks. Um, work for flexibility in knees, walking in nature was another one. Um, Okay, I, I'm, it's hard. Th There's a lot of chatter going, but they're having their own discussion out here on, uh, out on uh, YouTube and Facebook Live. So that's, I think those are the main things I think. And I think probably the biggest key in all this is just your awareness of it. You know, how many of you thought, oh, I really should be stretching before today? But, you know, once you think about it, you think, wow, stretching is a really important part. It's they say whenever you walk and exercise, you should stretch at the end of it. And that may be a little piece that gets sort of by the time you're done, you're ready and moving on to your next activity. So maybe even just adding that in gives a greater sense of flexibility. Sometimes it's an internal process. It's not always about movement. Sometimes it's just about just learning to be present <clears throat> and hear and hopefully be able to hear and discern before um, it gets to the place where we have something significant happen and then we get to sit and ponder and be focused a little bit more. And sometimes that is the blessing that arises out of physical challenges because it makes us pay attention. He talks about, you know, the importance, and I've talked about these in other weeks that we've been looking at this, the importance of good sleep, the importance of um, good digestive um, flow by eating the right foods and being naturally active, um, and then learning a skill. And I know Jim had talked about dancing, that, that how that not only makes his physical body feel better, but it really is also important to his emotional and mental state too. So as we've talked about in here, whether it's adding some kind of yoga or adding some kind of movement that requires you to really focus more on balance or dancing or whatever lets you feel a more holistic sense of yourself. That not just your body or not just your mind and the desires are part of it, but the body is also included in it. As we bring more light into our bodies, we discover that it is the wisdom of our body that brings in the light. It is not just something that we have to physically open a channel, but it is the wisdom of the body itself that allows us to experience more light. So your invitation this week is to see how well and to actually create a little bit of time to tune into the wisdom of your body and to make those small changes. They don't have to be huge changes, but it, so if you already regularly walk at the end of your walk, then just take a little time, maybe even a little more time to stretch out your body or when you get done dancing. But however it is that allows a sense of greater flexibility, a greater sense of balance and agility, because when we have it in the body, it is much easier to maintain it in our minds and in our hearts and in our spirit. And as we focus on this, imagining that there is more light in our bodies. What we really discover, it is the wisdom of the body that brings us into the light. Namaste.
All right. Well, it is our opportunity now to share of our financial good with this ministry. We're just grateful for the many channels that flow in and through this ministry. We're grateful for the continued influx of all that we need to cover all that requires that form of money to take care of it. In just a moment, I guess we're going to do it table by table today. Um, the ushers will invite you to come up and, and share with your gift in the large basket. And if this isn't your Sunday to share or you give electronically, we don't have any cards today, so just put your hand over it and add your energy to it. And then we want to be in that flow always of giving and receiving, so we invite you to take an affirmation to bless you this week. So let us take what we offer today into our hands, into our hearts, the energy of that abundant flow in our lives and in the lives of this community and bless it. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother God. week, expanding our capacity to be flexible and agile, we go, knowing our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. All right, yeah, you do this. 